Turning us now is LGLP with stories trending around the world. Hello, Genex. I love that smile. Good morning, Dr. Abati. <laughs> I'm just going to say I was dancing earlier for you, wasn't I? Yeah. <laughs> you didn't say it. I would have said it. You, you, I you were going to do to that. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. That was the real show this Yes, I, I, I decided to. She, we have you to. should have recorded you twerking. Yeah. I wasn't twerking. No. <laughs> well, it looks he, like that. He, he does the twerking. So, 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 Good so morning. So she was properly doing the one again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You do it like this. Take I love oh, a friend of mine called me from America to ask me about that dance one step. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, the one like it. it's amazing. And after well, the right. program, maybe you dance uh, Buga Buga. Buga is like this. Yeah. <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> I know everything. He's done it. Well, all right. Good morning to you viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In the United States, new White House press secretary, Karine Jean-Pierre, held her first briefing on Monday, crediting barrier-breaking people who came before her for making it possible for a black, LGBTQ, immigrant woman like herself to rise to one of the most high-profile jobs in American government. I am obviously acutely aware uh, that my presence at this podium uh, represents a few firsts. Uh, I am a black gay immigrant woman, the first of all three of those to hold this position. And 18-year-old Peyton Gendron, the teenager accused of massacring 10 black people at a Buffalo supermarket on May 14, is reported to have written a diary as far back as November last year about staging a live-streamed attack on African Americans. The 180-page document revealed that the attack was intended to terrorize all non-white and non-Christian people to get them to leave the country. In Nigeria, the governor of Sokoto State, Aminu Tambowal, on Monday relaxed the 24-hour curfew he imposed in the state after some irate youth took to the streets to protest against the arrest of the suspected killers of Deborah Samuel, the 22-year-old student of Shehu Shagari College of Education, who was set ablaze by a mob over comments considered to be an insult to Prophet Muhammad. The 24-hour curfew was revised following a security report and will now be from dusk to dawn in Sokoto Township. Under sports, Paris Saint-Germain striker Kylian Mbappe has taken home the trophy after winning the French League's Best Player Award for the third time in his career. The 23-year-old France star, who is the league's top scorer, won the award last year when he netted a career-high 42 goals overall in 2019. The trophy was not awarded in 2020 after the coronavirus pandemic ended the season 10 games early. Finally, under entertainment, after two years of the COVID-19 pandemic, the 75th Cannes Film Festival, an annual event showcasing the work of filmmakers across the globe, is set to open today, May 17th. The festival is one of the most glamorous events in the world, with a red carpet on the French Riviera that has been graced by many style icons over the decades, from Bridget Bardot to Princess Diana. Let's begin what's trending with reactions trailing the arrest of Nigeria's Accountant General, Ahmed Idris. The Accountant General was reportedly intercepted in Kano State by operatives of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission on Monday evening over alleged money laundering activities and diversion of at least 80 billion naira in public funds. The EFCC is said to have summoned Idris repeatedly for interrogation before the arrest was made. The Commission's verified intelligence showed that Idris raked off the funds through bogus consultancies using proxies, family members, and close associates. The funds were said to have been laundered through real estate investments in Kanu and Abuja. Well, in the meantime, the Police Service Commission on Monday confirmed the promotion of Ibrahim Magu, former acting chairman of Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, to the position of Assistant Inspector General of Police. The development comes amid Magu's expected retirement from the Nigeria Police Force, having clocked the mandatory retirement age of 60 on May 5th. In July 2020, when Magu was still at the helm of affairs in the EFCC, he was arrested, 
detained and suspended as the acting chairman of the anti-graft agency after he appeared before a panel probing allegations of gross misconduct. Well, let's take some reactions. This is from King, who wrote, All in one day, former EFCC boss Ibrahim Magu, under investigation, promoted to the rank of AIG. Accountant General of the Federation, Ahmed Idris, arrested by EFCC for stealing 80 billion. The shame is celebrated. The celebrated is shamed. This is Nigeria. While well, Faith wrote, nothing will come out of Ahmed Idris' arrest. Ibrahim Magu's arrest amounted to nothing. He has been promoted to AIG in the police. Where is the report of the panel that investigated him? Dr. Abati, over to you. This is the question everyone is asking. We have been waiting for that report from the panel, and we still didn't see it, only to hear that he's been promoted. Okay, Mr. Ibrahim Magu, uh, now Assistant Inspector General of Police, was not the only person yes. promoted. The explanation that was given was that he had been passed over twice, uh, you know, in the promotion exercise. Maybe perhaps because of the uh, matter that was brought up against him. But in total, over 10,000 uh, policemen were promoted by the Police Service Commission. Uh, over 6,107, you know, uh, um, inspectors, for example, to cite one example, were promoted to the rank of uh, assistant uh, ASP2. And then all of that through all the categories. DIG, a DIG was appointed, Ogunaya Amadi, to replace uh, the late uh, DIG. Ibunike, uh, the Southeast representative on the management committee of the police. But it's understandable why the case of uh, AIG Brian Mago is what everybody is focusing upon. And you already indicated why that is the case, because of that investigation, the panel that was set up. At the end of the day, nothing came out of that panel. He was moved out of uh, the ELCC. He remained within the uh, uh, police force. So the question is, this is how Nigeria works, not so. People are accused of something. Nothing comes out of it. With this promotion, it may be said that uh, Mr. Ibrahim Magu can say that it was wrongly accused. Okay? And many people get wrongly accused in this country. I'm not putting up a defense for him, but there's so much untidiness within our system. He was left in limbo after he left uh, the EF EFCC. Nobody knew what has happened. Now, his promotion now, after he had been passed over twice, it's like a statement by the Police Service Commission, which is responsible for appointments, promotion, and discipline. It's an indication that that uh, Police Service Commission, led by former Inspector General Musilu Smith, has not found him guilty in terms of their own institutional processes. And he has been given you know, his due promotion. And you know, he will feel a sense of vindication. That is the message that the Nigerian state is sending across in this particular regard. So uh, people you know, will be in order to congratulate him because it seems he has been absolved of all the allegations with this uh, recognition. That is one. The second part of it has to do with the uh, uh, accountant general of the Federation, Ahmed Idris. Well, we've discussed the subject twice this morning, and then somebody sent me a, a message, a university teacher. He says Hasu has been vindicated. <laughs> that this is a man who is uh, managing Nigeria's IPs. And now these allegations have no, come for her. You know, university teachers on. said they didn't want to be part of IPs. And they had all kinds of things to, to, to talk about. And then he, the guy went further. He sent another. I told him, I cautioned him. I said, no. It's speech. <laughs> this is, uh, no, that's, the man is innocent until proven guilty. Anybody can be investigated. I said, yes, you are talking law. He said, he reminded me, he said, this was a man who attained the age of uh, 60 years. That was it. And he was supposed to go on retirement, but they reappointed him. So why will he not behave anyhow when the president is backing him? Uh. Okay, so that's the kind of sentiments yeah. you get from Nigerians. But I still say that even in his own case, you know, we should avoid the temptation of media, media trial. Investigation is not conviction, mm. and we should see the process till the end. And as I pointed out earlier, he and everyone else deserves the right, you know, uh, to be given fair hearing and to be given the opportunity to defend themselves. I will not join anybody 
to start to crucify anybody on the basis of an evidence uh, of evidence that is not available before me. Well, all right. Absolutely not. Yes, I think it does bear repeating from me again. As I said earlier, our constitution guarantees that we are innocent until proved guilty. So I'm going to start on the Accounts General, uh, Mr. Idris. What I also said, and I, and I think I'm changing my mind now. I also said <laughs> that perhaps President Buhari might regret insisting on having him, retaining him, even though he'd passed the age of 60, and there were some protests against his retention. But perhaps not. Because when you look at the story that you juxtaposed with it about um, Ibrahim Mago, he was never chairman of EFCC. He was always acting chairman of EFCC. The Senate rejected him, and the president kept him. So we do see this... Um, intractable attitude towards his own appointees is a pattern. He will not vary, no matter who is protesting, whether it's civil society organizations or even the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So I don't think he regrets it at all. But perhaps Mr. Idris does, because what he's been accused of is really extremely serious. And I talked earlier about how this is good for the fight against corruption, regardless of what high office yes, you occupy. I so but I hope EFCC is able to clinch a conviction, their batting average is not the best when it comes to going to court and actually winning. A successful prosecution is really the proof of the pudding here. And also the fact that EFCC, I'm aware that they've done a lot recently in trying to close loopholes that enable people to launder money through real estate. And this, for me, it shows that, that those efforts are bearing fruit. Yeah. That's great. But we just hope that, the, you know, the course of justice is served and, you know, the law is upheld and that we don't get a presidential pardon if at all this goes all the way to a conviction. Absolutely. With regards to um, Ibrahim, Ibrahim Magu, Magu. Yes, Justice Ayah Salami's report, we've waited and waited endlessly and we haven't heard anything. But what was said at the time, what was reported, this was at the, um, November 2020, was that it, the panel recommended his removal as acting chairman of EFCC. But I guess they didn't find enough in terms of actual proof so that now he's been promoted, which I, I agree with your analysis. It's a vindication. It is. Yes. It is. It is. They can say it was strongly accused. Yeah. After being dragged yeah. through the mud. Unfortunately. Yes. I but mean, so I, I still feel like it should be made public, the panel investigation. It should, right. but it's been November 2020 and we, we haven't heard we anything. We deserve to know. I mean, you see, the We're way we, people just move on from things in this yeah. country, it's, it's pure gaslighting of Nigerians. I remember we had the Attorney General when that case was on, and we asked him. Hope we'll see this to a logical conclusion. He said, yes, we would. The Justice Ayah Salami panel. We remember the circus made about the Justice Ayah Salami panel. But hey, all of a sudden, we didn't see anything. Nigerians don't deserve to know. You know when I keep saying, these guys don't take us for granted. They just look as, oh, who are they, Nigerians? Oh, they could go die if they want. And all of a sudden, now we're seeing a promotion. They've not got to the end of the matter. I'm sure reports were written as regards to that panel. Some say, oh, maybe because it was the power tussle going on between the Attorney General and this man. Some say otherwise. But what we know is that it was pulled out of office, somebody else was put in there, and we didn't hear anything. Now we're seeing promotion. Hello, what is happening here? I'm in the dark. And that's always the case. And when you look, it's like a pattern in this country. Look at former EFCC uh, chairman, Ibrahim Lamode. Mm -hmm. allegations of corruption too. So it's, it's become a convenient thing. Allegations of corruption, but we don't see the end of it. There's something going on that people are not telling us. Mm. And they can keep deceiving us as much as they can because I, I think obviously they keep peeing on our backs and they tell us it's raining. Only God knows what happens really in all these cases. Only God knows what just uh, Salami Pana did find. Was it a witch hunt? Was it not? Only God knows. Because you see, most times you don't even get to know anything. And it speaks volumes of public accountability in this country. Second case is that of the uh, Accountant General. And you wonder what is happening. Just like the Magu case, the Accountant General, too, the former Accountant General, there were allegations of corruption. Anyway, that one, he had to return the money. But this was their allegations. What is happening? Some have said, is it a witch hunt? Some will say, no. Why is it coming too rough? Why are we having cases of, you know, allegations of corruption here and there? It shows that the government is porous. It shows that, and it's not, I'm sorry to say, it's not an indication that we're winning the fight against corruption. In fact, it's a sad blight on our so-called fight against corruption. We are not fighting corruption because corruption has a harvest culture already. 
It's grown, it's matured, and it's shown that the system is so corrupt and bad that anybody can do anything they want to do in this country. And that's the nation we have built for ourselves. We've built a corrupt system, a corrupt civil service, a corrupt state, and corruption has permeated to every aspect of our national life. I didn't actually say uh, we're winning the uh, fight so against corruption. For me, okay. so for me, this is just a sad reminder. And Oji, just to put this in, Dr. Bajmi, don't call this hate speech. No, 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 God. He's not the same person that married an underage girl. He, he, he was reported to. To have married an underage yeah. girl in Kano? Yeah, yeah. mm. We took I mean, that story. We took that story, yes, I remember. Did, this yeah. is our counter general of the Federation. Was, anyway, yeah. that's a part. But it just speaks volumes of what our country has become. So please, let me use the words of Donald Trump. Let us drain the yeah. swamp of Nigeria. Please. Well, right. I wanted to ask add me. something to mm. this police promotion. Okay. You know, we always talk about policemen not being promoted, uh, policemen being rewarded and promoted was one of the demands during the NSAS uh, <laughs> protest in 2020. Since then, we have been told their salaries have been increased. Now the uh, uh, Police Service Commission has followed suit. Over 10,000 of them promoted from DIG level down to uh, corporal. Well, uh, Retired IG Muslim Smith, in uh, signing off on this promotion, said that he hopes that these police officers will rededicate themselves to work. And I hope that they will take that to heart. He also stressed the point about discipline. They want promotion, they want promotion. About 10,000 of them have been promoted. This should be an incentive for them to do more to be more diligent, mm. to be like that woman that we were celebrating, yes. controlling traffic, uh, 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 you know, In the inside the rain. The, uh, we the hope rain. so, that yes. we will see the indication, and that the money that will come with this uh, advancement, you know, will, will yield uh, positive uh, fruits in terms of better service to the Nigerian people. Absolutely. Well said, Dr. Abati. Let's take another story. The gruesome murder of David Emo, a sound engineer by motorcyclists in Lagos on May 12th, continues to generate controversial views in the wake of the gruesome murder of Deborah Samuel. David was set ablaze by an irate mob near Bier Barn, a leisure facility that contracted him to perform on the day he was brutally murdered in the lucky axis of the state. In a statement released on Monday, the facility said that it had engaged the services of the sound engineer and a live band to entertain its patrons when a group of rankled motorcyclists alleged that David had used a charm to hit one of its members who was presumed dead and requested that he should be handed over to them. The group insisted that David was an internet fraudster trying to use their member for money ritual. David was forcefully removed from their premises and beaten to a pulp before he was set ablaze. The facility stated that its security teamed up with three naval officers and operatives from the Rapid Response Squad unit of the police, but could not bring the situation under control. I mean, what is Nigeria turning into? How, I mean, did you see that report? It was well detailed. There was police, there were naval officers, and they could not stop these motorcyclists <laughs> from carrying out this extrajudicial killing of this young man. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what else to say. That's the scariest part of it, that the security operatives were completely overwhelmed. Yes. And I now recall how we've had motorcycle bans, haven't we? Yes. These activities have been banned, and we all know why. It's a security issue. What has happened to David could literally happen to anybody. Anybody. And now we have this case of classic deflection. What was initially reported was there was an argument over 100 naira transport fee or something like that. Change. And now, change. Uh -huh, change. Mm. And now he hit somebody with a charm and killed them. Now the victim is being blamed. The victim is now being turned into some evil internet fraudster who murdered one of their people. We have to go back to that motorcycle ban and that has to be looked into. What Absolutely. are they all doing here? I know the constitution, I think it's section 41, guarantees all Nigerians freedom of movement. I can go and settle wherever I feel like, but that's fine as long as my activities are lawful. You cannot leave wherever you're from and come to Lagos or anywhere else and be acting like a lunatic, which is really what this is. It's lunacy 
So, no, throw a tie around a human being and set them ablaze. Yeah. David left behind a widow and two little ones. Have yes. you seen his children? Yes, I have. Their it's babies, so it's sad. devastating. For what reason? Why are they here? And why are they being allowed to take over our streets? Why are we afraid of these people? Such that even security with guns cannot stop them. Then who are the rest of us? And we have to also look into whether or not these people are actually Nigerian. These, this, this mob that has come and have you know encamped all around us we are not safe here oh, yes. this story should not be swept under the carpet there's no explaining this away that he hit somebody with a charm they need to be dealt with they need to be i don't know what needs to happen here because obviously we have a constitution but something has to be done we That's cannot yeah. have this yeah they should revisit the motorcycle ban for starters and we Very have good. not heard any arrest dr Avati. actually nobody died the beer ban uh, people they put out uh, a statement that by the time, uh, you know, they got there uh, to try to rescue him, the person that they said had died had uh, regained consciousness. Of course they were lying. Of course they were lying. And this was, uh, you know, an altercation over 100 naira. I'm so upset, Dr. Abbas. And yet this gentleman has lost his life, leaving behind his, his family, his wife, and the two children. Actually, they said there were three naval ratings. The security men from the uh, club where he and the other two guys, the keyboardist and the saxophonist, were supposed to play with a band, a Legacy 360 band. And then they even called for help from the rapid response uh, squad, police. All of these three different categories of security uh, groups could not make a difference because they were outnumbered by these motorcyclists. And you know, you don't want to have any problem, either over one, one naira or five naira with any Okada rider in Lagos. I don't know where they come from. Any small disagreement, you see, they will just be showing up as if they are coming up from the surface of, uh, from, of, of the earth. So, which is I agree with you. I agree the with Lagos you. Lagos State Government We're at numbers. has yeah. to uh, take another look this? at the population of motorcyclists. In fact, I, uh, they can be... Uh, uh, look, when you say ban them now, some people will say, no, regulate them. Because... If they don't ride the motorcycle, they will constitute a, a menace. They, constitute, they already constitute more than enough menace. They have no respect for motorists, not even for pedestrians. Okay? So I think this is serious enough uh, an issue uh, for the government to look into. And I hope the police, they've made arrests. Because otherwise, this will just happen. The keyboardists and the, uh, and the saxophonists, as you speak, they were beating oh, a yeah. state of... Uh, yeah. Of unconsciousness, yes. and they are still in the hospital. The hospital. Why, why, why should anybody live in this kind of environment? And this same incident occurred the same day uh, Deborah Samuel was uh, was killed. Mm. It was as if there was some kind of a communication that uh, the devil should come and drink water in Nigeria on that particular day, from uh, Sokoto to Leki in Lagos. It's so sad. Which is sad. In all of this, and I support your both positions because we are outnumbered. It's scary. During COVID, it was even worse off. A lot of these people came in their torrents and they were knocking at the gates of different estates for food. And it's a scary situation. And we cannot live like this. Or else, it will cause mayhem. What would have happened if they didn't get food? Can you imagine? They were, they were storming. You know, during COVID, we had some people in my estate, we had to start cooking to go give them. You had better. Yes, because you have to preserve yourself. So Lagos as it is today is not safe. As far as this island we, we live is not safe. The government has to do something about these riders. They also have an association, Akomoro. I'm not sure Akomoro has said anything about I, this. I haven't seen any The Okada Rider Association should come out. They should fish out those people that perpetrated this crime. And I doubt most of these members, these people that, especially in that lucky phase, well, most of them that, that, that ride these rickshaws, I doubt if, if they're part of Akomoro. The police... The police were there. What did they so do So they then? couldn't do anything as Why regards that? Why couldn't they pick anybody from so that So nobody crowd? could be arrested. What and happened? it goes back even to the funding of the police. Police is I there. You see it. a mob action. I'm sure those police officers are never ready to even have tear gas. So, mm -hmm. so no proper uh, riot control mechanism. That's why we talk about funding of the police. But the Okada Riot Association, Akoma, must be able to fish out these people that have perpetrated this crime. And the state must take it up. And I'm sad. I'm sorry. Nothing has been said. The Lagos State Government, what, is, what, what investigation is going on as regards this case? David must not die in vain. No. But the Lagos State Government too must save us. Because they've considered a nuisance. I have seen in broad daylight 
you hit a rickshaw and they mobilize and they're beating you already. Well, justice for Deborah, justice for David. Simplicity. But, uh, well, let's just be optimistic. This is election season. A governor looking for a second term in office may not uh, ban uh, motorcyclists. Oh. Mm. That's part of the problem. Okay. That, that's hard. Yeah, Akuma also contributes uh, 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 funds to politicians. Look and that's German part of the problem. And, and we, yeah. can't, we can't say because we are getting political largesse for somewhere, and even goes to the road transport workers, we're getting political largesse for somewhere, people can just constitute nuisance. Because not only Okada riders, what about road transport workers? People have been hit by a straight bullet because road transport workers are fighting different yes. factions. It, what kind of country are we even building? Yeah. It's uh, totally, totally <laughs> unacceptable. Thank you very Everything much. Everything that's uh, been going on. Well, that's all I have for you. Uh, thank you again for your beautiful analysis. May David's soul rest in peace. That's all I have for you on What's Trending Today. I'll see you tomorrow.